First at 11, breaking news, a peaceful protest against an act of violence in Monroe County turns violent when a car drives into the crowd. WRTV's Cameron Riddle is live in Bloomington tonight. Cameron, you saw this all happen about two hours ago. Yeah, that's right, Amanda. Good evening. It is calm now here at the corner of 6th and Walnut, and this is the quietest it has been in downtown in at least the past seven hours, but particularly in the past three hours when things were just about to wind down from the protest here today uh, following that viral video showing uh, Vox Booker being attacked. People came here to the courthouse to protest that the people in that video have not yet been arrested as things things wound down for the evening. Protesters were headed to their cars when a car came through here speeding at a high rate of speed and hit two protesters. Take a look at the aftermath of that video. This is video shot by our photographer Jake Weller. You can see that one woman is laying in the street as 911 operators and first responders get that woman into a stretcher. We found out that there were two people on that car. We didn't get to shoot video of this red car going at a high rate of speed down Walnut Street. But I can tell you with my own eyes, I witnessed that car go past me with a loud vroom. And I saw one person hanging on the window of that car. The second person was the woman who was riding on the hood. All of this after hours of peaceful protests here in downtown Bloomington, starting at the courthouse and making its way throughout the streets. As I said, protesters are responding to the viral video showing Vox Brooker being attacked while he was at Lake Monroe on the 4th of July. They are upset that protests uh, that police rather have not arrested the people in that video. They are calling for those attackers to be arrested and for the officers who declined to make an arrest to be fired. All of that now is going to continue to fuel protests, which we are now hearing will continue tomorrow. A moment ago, I told you about the person who was riding on the window, hanging literally for dear life. That was Jeff Stewart. He was the person who was hit by that car. He is okay tonight, but he described to me firsthand what he saw as he was literally holding on for his life. A woman driving the vehicle came up to the stop and had started revving her engine towards uh, us and we tried to stop her and let her know that the crowd is clearing up just wait a second but she and her passenger both wanted to go right away so um, they started to push and they pushed into the uh, woman uh, that was with me and when she pushed again both of us went on the vehicle I was just trying to block her vision so she would slow down um, so I tried to pull myself as far in her way to make kind of obstruct her view but um, she drove through red lights and made her turn up here that threw both of us off the car. And so we are here where the car uh, made a hard right turn. That's what threw Jeff and the woman who's been taken to the hospital off of the car. They landed right here in the street. We do not have the condition of that woman, but we did witness her being transported to the hospital. And as I said, I witnessed that car come up this street at a super high rate of speed. A loud vroom was coming with the car. And so that means that her foot was definitely on the gas with no signs of that car trying to slow down. As I saw Jeff hanging on to the driver's side window as that car went up this way. Uh, police tell us uh, we are still trying to find out more information about that driver, but we are uh, able to tell you that it was a red four-door car, possibly a Toyota Corolla uh, that police are now looking for. Some officers were just telling me officers are in the area still looking for that vehicle. We're working to find much more information on that driver and the protester on her condition who tonight is in the hospital. Reporting tonight live in Bloomington, I'm Cameron Cameron Riddle, RTV6. And Cameron, before you go, we know that you've been there all night. You reported live for us at 7 o'clock from that peaceful protest. Tell us how emotions changed after that happened when that person was hit. Absolute chaos, Amanda. Absolute chaos. You know, Patrick Ford was one of the organizers. And just, I mean, if this had happened five minutes before, this would have been so much worse because Patrick was just telling everybody, all right, it's been a good night. Let's go home. Let's end tonight on a positive note. And he told people, do not walk to your car alone because there are people who do not want to see protesters down here tonight. So there was already a bit of fear, but let's be careful. And then the second that that car came at a high rate of speed down the street, there 
was screaming, there was yelling, there were people running trying to go chase the car. Of course, some people fell and there were injuries from that, but the, the most of the attention came here to 6th and Walnut where there were literally people laying in the street after being uh, tossed and tumbled by a speeding car. Absolute chaos here tonight. This finally the quietest it, is, quietest it has been in Bloomington tonight. Okay, thank you, Cameron, for that. And as Cameron mentioned, a weekend attack sparked that demonstration in Bloomington. This is the viral video that shows several men holding Vox Booker against a tree with his arms behind his back. Booker says the group threatened to lynch him while shouting white power and racial slurs. He says friends and other bystanders demanded the attackers let him go. Booker believes that saved his life. There was a moment where uh, a white woman that was standing by yelled out, uh, not to kill me, and, and as I was underneath these men struggling to breathe, I realized that she was talking about me, not to kill me. Booker says this happened while he and some friends went to watch the lunar eclipse at Lake Monroe. Officers with the Department of Natural Resources came to the scene, but no arrests were made. Booker does not like the way the call was handled. He wants his attackers and the officers held accountable. I want these folks to be arrested. I want them to be prosecuted. I want the message sent out to the community that this can never happen again. And if you try it, we will hold you accountable. And I want justice to be that we are going to examine all systems of power and make sure that if officers conduct themselves in this way again, that they will be removed from their public duties. The Department of Natural Resources says it is still investigating the case. We will continue to bring you updates as new information on this is released.